Well, it's time to talk Oscars wash up. Jamie Tram from The Big Issue magazine, Kate Jinks from Melbourne International Film Festival. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks for having us. It's great to be here. Let's talk first about the film that cleaned up this year, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. It won Best Picture, it won Best Director, it won Best Actress, Best Editing. Is any of this a surprise to you? For me, not so much. It really felt like as soon as it started winning one thing, it was going to scoop the pool and win absolutely everything, everywhere, all at once. Like, it was really <laughs> not a big surprise and therefore not a very exciting Oscars. But, you know, I'm glad it, it won what it did. What about you? I mean, for a moment there, it looked like All Quiet could have disrupted their chances. But it still cleaned up in the end, for sure. And it was so satisfying to watch, especially with those victory speeches. I have to admit, as a film, I found it kind of baffling and towards the end, almost irritating. But I also acknowledge that that cacophony of ideas that you're thrown into as a viewer is totally intentional. You can access all the memories, their emotions, even the skills. There's a great evil spreading throughout the many verses. And you be your only chance of stopping it. Before we start breaking this film down, Kate, can you give me a little bit of uh, backstory? Yeah, I mean, look, it's not the easiest film to summarise. In fact, it's pretty much near impossible, but essentially it's about an immigrant family in America who are struggling with intergenerational trauma, they're running a laundromat, they're struggling with the IRS. Mrs Wang, are you with us? There are alternate realities happening, so much is happening in this film. And Michelle Yeoh stars as the mother. She sort of needs to dig deep to essentially save the world and pay her taxes. It's the second feature from these two Daniels who go by the Daniels. <laughs> um, Jamie, what was your take on the film? I think it was definitely very overwhelming, but at its centre, I think it was at its best when it focused on that really complicated parent-child relationship within immigrant families and it also the chaos of immigrant life and how it complicates that relationship and diving into the nuances of an immigrant family it's something which I personally connected with. I mean Michelle Yeoh right she's so good at playing these larger than life characters these action stars but as this immigrant mother she's she's perfect. There's no way I am the Evelyn you are looking for. She's so down to earth I could see so much of you know my own parents in her. I think the movie's at its best when it's doing that, but when it's doing wacky hijinks, when it's traveling through the multiverse, it, it lost me a little bit because I struggled to keep up with its style and I think its humor was just a little bit juvenile as well. Mm. But I'm actually genuinely happy that it won. Yeah, I got a lot out of it. I really enjoyed the film. Like you, I was a little baffled in many parts. It's not a film that I have thought much about since I have seen it. And there were other films up for Best Picture that I have thought a lot about, like Tar. But I think it was a good winner. Like, I'm happy that it won. It's an immigrant story. It's also a queer story. And we don't get much of that. Like, it's a, quite a mix of things, this film. Did you or did you not leave that film craving an everything bagel? <laughs> no. No. I, it was the bagel that did me in, I have to say. Yeah, it was extremely unfunny for me. Yeah. I thought it was emotionally very overwrought to the point of feeling a bit artificial towards the end. But then, you know, when they hug at the end, it's like, okay, I'm crying again. Yeah. And Michelle Yeoh's win, winning Best Actress, what a moment that was. First Asian actress to win in that category, and she's only the second woman of colour to win in that category ever. 95 years. That's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Appallingly wild. Mm. And Ki Kei Kwan too, his win for Best Supporting Actor, second Asian man to do it. Considering how long he's been shut out of the industry as an actor, it was so satisfying to watch him win that. All right, well, let's move on to some of the other films from this year. Kate, I know you were really into After Sun, which was the debut feature from Charlotte Wells, and Paul Mescal was also up for Best Actor. Yeah, Paul Mescal sadly did not win. Brendan Fraser did uh, for The Whale. But I really wanted to talk about After Sun because it is this very beautiful, quite small film that I think not many people really expected to make it all the way to the Oscars. It's directed by Charlotte Wells, uh, Scottish-American director. This is her debut feature. Would have loved to have seen it in Best Picture and Best Director category, mm. but yeah, what, a, what a stunning film. I think it's my favourite film of the last 12 months. Mm.
Why don't you go over and introduce yourself? Dad, you know, they're like kids. Why don't you go over and introduce yourself? Mm. Sophie, they're like old. It's a film about an 11 year old girl who goes on holidays with her father. Her father and mother have separated. It's set in the mid 90s, and part of it is caught on camcorder. Mm. So the viewer gets to see the holiday on the camcorder as it happened, and then also the older Sophie playing back the footage that her dad's taken and sort of grappling with memory and how your memory changes and perhaps as a kid you're not seeing everything that's going on in your parents' life. There's something about that grainy camcorder footage that just breaks my oh. mind's heart. Like yeah. I got 10 minutes in I was like, oh, I'm gonna cry. Yeah. Jamie, how did you feel about it? Yeah, I found it just quietly devastating. I think there's a theme of um, complicated parent-child relationships coming through here, but I think it's about the act of trying to figure out who your parents were and how impossible that is. And it's, yeah, quietly very beautiful. It's really has been such a great film to see get so much celebration because it is a really small film and so it's impossible not to feel something when you're, when you're watching it. Yeah. You know, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything as you get older, you know? I've done it all and you can too. Wish we could have stayed for longer. Me too. Finally, there's some pretty great documentaries in the competition this year. The winner was a film called Navalny, which is about the Kremlin's plot to kill one of Putin's biggest political rivals. But since this is an art show, I want to talk about an arts documentary. It's called All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, and it's about photographer Nan Golden. Yeah, it's a beautiful documentary. It was directed by Laura Poitras, who of course won an Oscar a number of years ago for her film uh, Citizen Four, about the whistleblower Edward Snowden. Photography is like a flash of euphoria and it gave me a voice. Once I started sharing the work, it was really heavy resistance, especially from male artists and gallerists who said, this isn't photography. Nobody photographs their own life. Jamie, can you tell us a little bit about Nan Golden? So Nan Golden is a queer countercultural photographer. Her works have um, explored sort of the queer countercultural scene of the 60s and 70s most famously and a lot of really important queer life before the AIDS epidemic of the 80s and onwards. And so she's this incredible artist and she was hit by her own addiction to opioids and has used her power and stature within the art world to create an activist group who you know banded together to essentially come after famously the Sackler family who own the patents of, you know, two major opioids and they also are major American philanthropists to the art world. So she was able to, yeah, use her network essentially to try to take them down. My anger at the Sackler family, it's personal. When you think of the profit of people's pain, you can only be furious. I was familiar with her photography, but what I thought this film did so well was to flesh out her childhood experiences mm. and then really situate her in this art scene in New York and show how those directly influence her modern activism. It's such an interesting look at how, you know, that well-worn intersection of big pharma and, you know, fine arts. It's, yeah, an incredible takedown. I think we should take these people down. She put so much on the line in her activism. You know, like, I remember when all this started, I thought, oh, it's so amazing, but it's not going to go anywhere. And, of course, it has. So many museums have taken the Sackler name off their wings or taken them off their plaques in the galleries. You know, like, this is a family who've donated to the Louvre, the V&A, the Met, the Guggenheim. Like, these are, like, major institutions all of which, or most of which, have Nan Golden in their catalogues. And also the sort of face it gives to the opioid crisis in America, which you would usually think of these as almost two separate documentaries, one about the opioid crisis, one about art washing, but they've, they've come together 
with this just incredible central figure. What I love about the film is the way it captures like the ebb and flow of political and social turmoil and how that sort of repeated almost throughout Nan Golding's life time and time again. And for some people it's just a struggle, like it's an uphill battle to keep surviving. And I think it's such an emotional and such a devastating portrait of that kind of life. She's such a tremendous figure. I think it's a must-see documentary. The wrong things are kept secret in this society. And that destroys people. So if people want to see these films, where can they see them? Everything Everywhere All At Once is currently streaming on Binge. And you can see After Sun and All the Beauty and the Bloodshed in cinemas, which fabulous. <laughs> Please do if you can. But I'm sure they'll be streaming soon. Everywhere. All at once. All the time. <laughs> Jamie Tram, Kate Jinks, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks. Thank you. It's a pleasure.